Hey, what's up? David with Brazos Valley Strength. And today we're gonna to be talking about bench press bar path and why you should flare your elbows on the concentric portion of the bench press. I wanted to be clear with that to start off with because I did get some pushback in one of my previous videos on retraction in the bench press. And I think a lot of the criticism there or a lot of the, I don't know, complaints, the disagreements, or maybe on people who didn't watch the whole video and specifically people who maybe didn't really understand that I was specifically talking about the concentric portion of the bench press and that retraction during the descent, overall fine by me. And in this video, I will be encouraging some degree of external rotation or tuck with the elbows during the descent for most people, but that flaring your elbows internally rotating on the way up is probably going to be a productive tool for just about everybody. So we're gonna dive into this. We're gonna hopefully come up with a efficient idea, the concept for pretty much everybody, how it differs from person to person with grip width and limb length and things like that. But to start off with, I do think we need some definitions here, especially internal rotation and external rotation. So that's really gonna be referring to the upper arm, the humerus. I'm just gonna to refer to it as the arm or just say internal external rotation. We're talking specifically about the humerus, but that may show up in some different ways that can sometimes be confusing for people. So internal rotation this way, obviously, external rotation that way. Practically, when I'm bench pressing, internal rotation makes my elbows go wider, which I think sometimes confuses people, but internal rotation flares my elbows, right? Elbows go out, external rotation more so tucks my elbows. As far as the muscles that are relevant here, the pecs do aid in internal rotation. They're not the prime mover here, but they do aid in an internal rotation, and that's going to show up later. Another important definition for us is going to be horizontal displacement. So if I'm talking about horizontal displacement, we have to think of this when I'm laying flat on the bench, that horizontal displacement of the barbell is going to be relative to my body on the bench relative to the floor. So if the barbell touches lower towards my hips, there's going to be horizontal displacement at that point. A few other really important ones that, I, that I'm going to reference a lot right here are going to be center of mass and base of support. So the center of mass is going to be really, in this case, it's just gonna be the barbell. But if we're talking about any other movement, squat, whatever, it's essentially the balance between the weight of our body and the barbell. As things get heavier, the center of mass biases much, much more towards the barbell. If you're a 200 pound lifter squatting 700 pounds, your body does not influence the center of mass a ton, right? 700 pounds is going to very much outweigh your body, kind of no matter how, no matter how much you lean against it. But with bench press, we don't really have much leverage against the barbell or much weight that we can use to counteract the barbell. So the barbell, easy way to think of it, is just going to be our center of mass. Base of support is just going to be where the center of mass actually rests over, you know, where gravity is going to take it overall, right? Or where our body actually has the ability to act on it. So squatting our feet, right? Our base of support is just going to be our feet. With bench press, our base of support is going to be our shoulders. So that right there is going to be the most important concept to think about from the very beginning. That for us to produce the most force, for us to stay balanced, for us to be really effective here, we're almost always looking for our center of mass and our base of support to be pretty close to one another. Bench press is unique though. Bench press is probably the only lift to where there is going to be uh, a, a pretty significant, significant degree of horizontal displacement of the center of mass. Squats and deadlifts, there might be some, right? But in generally speaking, we're mostly looking for straight bar paths and the center of mass to say stacked on top of our base of support. Bench press is not always that way. So we need to look into why we would even want to have a change in center of mass with the bench press, or why would we want to touch lower than our base of support? So our base of support is our shoulders, right? If I were to just go straight down to my shoulders to keep everything stacked on top of my center of mass, the issues there is that is a humongous amount of range of motion. 
And going back to the retraction video with the bench press, I think that's where a lot of the complaints were coming from. That people kind of misunderstood that I really was not saying that we should have a flat back or that we shouldn't try to reduce our range of motion. We absolutely are. And that's where this stuff comes in. So obviously in powerlifting, most people, almost everybody, is doing the best that they can to create a pretty good arch in the bench press. And the arch is effective by reducing the range of motion. But it also allows us to change that horizontal displacement and potentially for most people increase it a good bit. So there's going to be some overlap, even potentially some contradictions in, in what I say, I guess, depending on grip width and arch and all of that. But I want to start the illustration by mostly talking about people that are pretty ordinary, right? And I'll just use myself, my anatomy, limb lengths and all that, my leverages as a pretty good example. I have a good enough arch, but I have pretty long arms. So my range of motion overall is pretty far. And I think for most people, the way that they bench press, their limb lengths, their total range of motion is going to be fairly similar to mine. There's other people who are gonna have very wide benches, very big arches, and some of this stuff will change. So I'm gonna come back to more, I don't know, the, the, the more technical stuff, um, kind of the outlier stuff. But for the most part, we're gonna start with things that will apply to most people. So if we start with a big arch and I come and I touch the bar a little bit lower, I can pretty dramatically reduce my range of motion, which is going to be really important for us. But I do that by displacing the bar horizontally, and that does take a pretty good amount of strength to overcome that position. So when I'm coming lower and touching onto my chest, it's not because I'm stronger in an externally rotated position or that tucking my elbows is a stronger position for me overall, but it's the reduction in range of motion and potentially the, the range of motion, just like internally within the muscle, but the shoulder joint and all that can usually sustain a little bit more repetition there, being able to maintain that position rather than that very extreme position of coming all the way down and staying on top of the shoulders. Now the issue there comes when we start to press the barbell. So we're just accepting that I am moving the barbell off of my base of support and that I can overcome that force that I need to by getting the bar back on top of my shoulders. But the issues come when people press the bar straight up and they try to keep their elbows tucked, their humerus externally rotated, and then big issues start to show up because as your center of mass, as the barbell, moves further away vertically from your base of support, that force is going to be increasing, that we're going to start losing our ability to actually transfer the vertical force that we need to in the barbell because it's starting to tip. It's gonna start tipping away from our base of support and we're just not going to have the leverage to be able to push effectively into the barbell. So what do we do? We have to push the bar back. We have to flare our elbows. And, and I, I guess, you know, at this point, this is where people, um, you know, get, get frustrated or, or kind of confused, you know, is that we've been taught forever that we need to tuck our elbows. I, I know for sure coming up with my powerlifting stuff, my lifting, it was always tuck your elbows, tuck your elbows, squeeze your back. And I think it comes from the same place that I said in my retraction video, that a lot of these things do come from some of the equipped lifting, you know, the, that technique that touching lower there is going to benefit equipped lifters a ton because they also do have the shirt that can help them a whole lot get the barbell back. But as raw lifters, we're gonna have to use our muscles to be able to overcome that. Our front delts, our pecs are going to be the main thing that drives that barbell back on top of our shoulders to get it back on top of our base of support. And from that position, our pecs and our triceps are going to have a lot better leverage over the barbell to actually move the bar vertically, right? So I said earlier that my pecs, one of the main things that they do is horizontal adduction. So they grab the upper arm and they pull it inwards across your body. Your triceps are going to be extending your elbow. And those things are gonna be most effective when I'm stacked in a good balanced position to be able to produce force just vertically from my base of support and not have to fight those things. My pec is going to be very, very strong in that 
plane right there to pull across my body, but I don't want it to have to go through that entire range of motion to have to overcome the very, very high loads that I talked about potentially are going to be there in the close grip versus wide grip video. So as a general rule, wider grip benchers are going to have less horizontal displacement. Closer grip benchers are going to have more horizontal displacement. I'm gonna come back to really elaborating on, uh, I guess, specifics there, and, and particularly with wide grip benchers because I, that's where it gets a little bit more extreme, but I'll talk about the close grip benchers right now. We still wanna flare. We, we still do want to flare, but the issues is that with that close grip bench press, we are going to probably make it very, very hard around the elbow joint with that flare happening, especially very early. I talked about this again in my close grip versus wide grip video. But what I would say there is that closer grip bench presses are just not that efficient anyway, right? Some people are going to be stronger there. But I said in the video that for most people, one of the main things that we want to look at is that at the hardest portion of the lift, my wrist is not inside of my elbow. That's absolutely relevant here. So I think sometimes when people are doing close grip bench, they'll touch a little bit lower, right? And then they, then they press and they get stuck and they, they feel themselves kind of flaring and they think, oh, it's close grip, I should tuck more, right? I, I don't wanna flare hard, I always get stuck right there. But that is what is supposed to happen and the issue is that you're just running into inefficiency overall. You're, you're just inefficient with that movement anyway. And that your body fighting to flare is you trying your body naturally shifting towards stronger muscles that hopefully have leverage to overcome it when you're sort of already failing anyway, right? You're shifting towards an area to where your pecs are going to be able to pull on your arm a little bit better. But the issue is that because the grip is as close as what it is, where you still have high forces to overcome at my elbow. And it's just gonna be hard there, right? So it's not that that's necessarily a mistake. It's just that that bench press style is inefficient in the first place. Inefficient doesn't mean bad. It's just going to be harder on the triceps. And by widening the grip a little bit, we can reduce some of that inefficiency. And hopefully as I flare, overcome that stuff a little bit easier. So hopefully that gave us a pretty good conceptual understanding of why we want to flare our elbows and get the barbell back on top of our base of support. But people can still struggle here. Like even understanding what they're trying to do and why, sometimes it's difficult to get the bar on top of people's shoulders still. It's, it's pretty common. And I think so much of it goes back to habit originally that people are taught to tuck their elbows, tuck their elbows, tuck their elbows. And it's hard to overcome. It's hard to unlearn that motion overall, but I think that there's a few things that factor in here as to why people really struggle with this. One of the biggest ones is wrist position. So I have a video on this. I'm not going to dive too far into it. If you want a better in-depth explanation, watch the video, the wrist position video. But people also are taught very early that they should be having their wrists straight. We've already acknowledged that we're going to have some degree of horizontal displacement to reduce our range of motion. The problem is that if, uh, if my wrist is too straight, we're biasing the bar, we're biasing the center of mass towards our hips. And that makes it difficult for me to have the leverage, like I already said, I don't really have any body otherwise, to be able to get the bar back over my shoulders. So breaking my wrist back some can really, really help give us the leverage to get the barbell back. Another big issue here is that habitually, People gravitate towards short ranges of motion. That's generally a good thing. But in the bench press, especially with really light loads, let's say the empty bar, or one plate or whatever, it's pretty easy for us to take a pretty vertical bar path. That if I have just the bar and I can create this really big arch, I can kind of start the bar out over my chest a little bit. I can take this really short kind of snappy bar path that feels very, very efficient. But that goes back to the stuff that I said at the very beginning, that as the load gets heavier and heavier, that horizontal displacement off of our center of mass is going to become a lot worse whenever the load becomes a lot heavier. So when it's really light, I just don't need to press back, that I can overcome it and it feels really short and it feels really efficient. But as that load increases, and especially 90 plus percent, all of a sudden people start realizing like, oh shit, I'm getting stuck over my chest. 
and they don't have enough repetitions at that point with that pattern, with that flare, with the timing of getting the bar back over their shoulders. And they just don't under the, they don't have the practice to get it there that they really need. So my advice here for pretty much everybody is you just have to exaggerate it when it's light, when it's the empty bar. And, and this part right here, I can't emphasize enough. I, uh, so, so many lifters of mine, I've coached through issues like this and they basically say, Oh, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. And I, my response is always, you're trying to make it too natural with the early portions of the lift with those first warmups. Most of the time people are trying to make it feel good and feel natural. You have to exaggerate it with light loads so that when it's heavy and so that you have that practice of the timing, because it's not a supernatural thing that we're doing. We're deliberately changing the base or the center of mass out from on top of our base of support. And we have to have the timing and the muscle memory to actually be able to translate that bar backwards. So as far as practice and why people feel like they're struggling to do it when it's heavy, it's literally just that is that you haven't forced it enough when the loads are light enough and that when you don't really need it because those margins close that if, it, if you're training at 75, 80%, you may be able to get away with the bar being displaced just a little bit and you know, just a little bit more, but as stuff gets heavier, as it gets closer and closer to your true one rep max, that margin for error is going to close and you may fail over your chest when you wouldn't otherwise, if you had practiced better positioning, better timing, getting on, getting on top of your shoulders a little bit earlier. So if we're going to make a mistake, I would almost certainly say that I would rather somebody be flaring a little bit too early than a little bit too late. Of course, we want stuff to be perfectly timed and smooth and have stuff go pretty well. We can use our body, we can get some pop off the chest to have that timed well, but if you're going to fail the bench press, we want to give you an opportunity to actually be able to finish the rep. And that's only going to happen if you're stuck and you're stuck over your chest, the only option that you have from that point is to flare your elbows and get it back to a position that your pecs will have a little bit more leverage, your triceps will have a little bit more leverage, and overall, the force production potential is going to be significantly higher. So I did wanna take a second to speak on some of the, the much wider grip bench pressers because basically, I don't know that they need this whole video because this whole video is talking about why we should tuck right? Why we're trying to displace the bar down towards you know, our, our abdomen or so, why we need that horizontal displacement, but why we have to undo that on the way up. Wider grip bench pressers probably don't want that. And, and the reason is going to be pretty simple. The wider you go, we are just not going to have enough room with our elbows to get in front of the barbell and actually have leverage to move the barbell back. So the wider that you go, and again, I'm going to say wider, it has to go into limb length. So if I, if I go max width, it doesn't really affect my range of motion a whole lot, but a smaller lifter, shorter arms or whatever, that person goes max width on the barbell, their range of motion may be dramatically reduced. So at that point, that is how they are making their bench press more efficient they aren't reducing the range of motion through the horizontal displacement. They're reducing the range of motion by going wider on the barbell, but they're sacrificing that ability to touch lower because they're no longer going to have the leverage to get their elbows in front of the bar. Unless you're wearing a bench press shirt, then that will help. But at that point, we do want to bias more the whole way towards internal rotation and just keeping that bar path a little bit straighter. So, you're going to have to balance that stuff. You're going to have to balance how far down, because probably some degree of horizontal displacement is going to, going to be good, but you might struggle to get the bar back over your shoulders if you're going too far, and that may create some failure. So a straighter bar path and keeping stuff flared the whole way might be better, almost certainly would be better, especially for people as we get into the extremes of the range of motion. But I think some of the thoughts there do apply to everyone. That if you are struggling off your chest, besides just practice and wrist position and all that, you might try touching a little bit higher, that you may just be putting yourself in a position that you're going too low and you don't have the leverage to get it back. So even with a reduction in range of motion, especially at higher loads, these margins for error are just going to close. And so some of these things 
may have to change to where it's like visually less efficient, but overall mechanically makes a whole lot more sense. So we just have to think, as with pretty much every lift, it all goes back to center of mass and base of support and the relationship there. And in this case, we're kind of gaming the system a little bit, but hopefully we're able to overcome that stuff for more efficiency overall. So what can we do with variations? What can we do to help overcome some of these issues that people face with the challenges to, to make their bench press better and to learn this technique better? And almost always it comes down to timing around the chest long pause bench press, spoto press, pin presses, all of these things can help us learn where that bar needs to be. My feeling is that some of these exercises help because they make it harder off the chest. And what I mean by that is that when I was talking about the close grip bench press and our body's natural propensity for it to just kind of flare on its own, a lot of times us making it more challenging around our chest, our body's gonna gravitate to that position. Right, pin presses are an example. I don't use pin presses a ton anymore, but pin presses are one that almost always what people feel is they go down to the pins, they touch, and they feel like, shit, I'm stuck, I can't get it off. And then the bar kind of slides back, the bar drifts back off the pins, and then they move it. I'm like, right, well, because the pins are, the pins are kind of an interesting concept here. Because if I'm putting the pins to where the barbell touches the pins just barely, but it doesn't touch my chest. At that point, if I just slid the barbell back over my shoulders, I've reduced the range of motion, right? I'm saying that that's my touch point. Now, if I just slide the barbell back over my shoulders, now vertically, I can just press it. We've accomplished it. We've flared the elbows. We've gotten the bar on top of our base of support again. That's probably not the best way to do it. That's probably not how we really want our bench press to look, that it just goes back immediately and then presses, but that's the concept. So if we learn how we need that bar to move off the pins and what timing is appropriate, that can be a very good tool. Other exercises that can be really good for this too are just anything that keeps us engaged, keeps us connected to the barbell through the whole time. Spoto press, tempo bench press, three count bench, again, staying connected on the chest, even fatiguing it a little on the chest, and then just practicing, just forcing it, just making all that timing happen. And that stuff can go a really long way to help improve the practice here, but it does just take practice. And I can't emphasize that enough that so many lifters have struggled for a long, long time to overcome this stuff. And it just takes forcing with the early reps and kind of letting it feel awkward early on and then stuff gets better. So I think that's it. I think I covered everything uh, for most people for the concepts of why you should flare your elbows and the overall bar path on the bench press. If you do have questions, if you feel like I missed anything, just leave me a comment and I'll try to get back to those. If you disagree, I guess, let me know there too. Um, but I you know, tried to have discussions in the last one and it didn't go all that well, but we'll keep trying, I guess. Um, if you did like the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time.